Good afternoon, everyone. We are here at Bishop Kidman's house uh, to do a little Lectio Live. And so this afternoon, we're going to take some time to read our gospel for this weekend, coming from Luke's gospel, uh, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35, A Road to Emmaus, one of my favorite readings. And we have with us uh, Bailey from St. John Parish and Jacob from Nativity. And then we have Lindsay from St. Mary's and Kirsten from St. Mary's. And Shelby, youth minister at Our Lady of the Gulf. So we welcome you all with us today. Uh, Ken and Bishop uh, Kinnaman here with us to, to pray along. And Bishop's going to read it for us the first time. And then we're going to take an opportunity to choose a word or a phrase. We'll go around the table and everyone will have that time to share. And then the second time we read it, we'll share uh, the meaning for us and what's impacted us out of this reading. So... Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about the things that had happened. And while they were talking with each other, um, they uh, were discussing together. Jesus himself drew near and went, with, and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is the converse, this conversation which you're holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since this happened. Moreover, some of the women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. And they came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish men, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going, and he appeared to be going further. But they constrained him, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, he took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished out of their sight. They said to one another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road? while he opened to us the scriptures. And they rose that same hour, returned to Jerusalem. They have found the eleven gathered together and those who were with them, who said, The Lord has been raised indeed. He has appeared to Simon. Then they told him, then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. I think the word or phrase that spoke to me uh, is, and their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Uh, the word or phrase that I recognized was, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. What stuck out to me was, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. 
spoke out to me was the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. For me, it was, oh, how foolish you are. Um, I love the line, and they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. Mine was, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? So this time, Kirsten is going to read for us um, our reading, and then we'll again go around and share a uh, meaning for what this gospel means to us individually. Kirsten? Luke chapter 24. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with, up, with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he inter in interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us. For it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that, while he was with them at the table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us? on the way and open the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were, who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. So as I was celebrating Mass this morning, uh, it was one of those moments of uh, the breaking of the bread and, uh, and coming to know Jesus in the breaking of the bread. And it really uh, uh, made this particular gospel uh, leap off the page uh, for me. Uh, and uh, can imagine the excitement of the disciples as they were sharing that the Lord indeed has been raised, he is risen, and he has appeared to Simon Peter and then the disciples who were on the world to Emmaus couldn't hold back. They had to tell him, we came to know him too, uh, especially in the breaking of the bread. So he has visited us too, uh, as he did for us this morning as we were in spiritual communion together. Um, so my phrase was, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. 
And when I think of this, I think of it as like a challenge to myself to not be that person when I uh, enter into his kingdom to be able to recognize him rather than to n not be so consumed with sin and be so impure that I can't recognize the Savior of the world. So that's what I think about when I read this. Um, my phrase, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke. This speaks to me because um, the apostles knew what was going to happen with Jesus through his journey, that he was going to be crucified and then raised from the dead three days later. But this shows me that um, they knew what was going to happen, but they didn't exactly like believe that it would happen. So it shows me that even if I think something's going to happen, I need to pray to God and let him just take over in any situation to where I will know that he's got me through anything I go through. Thank you. Mine was, the Lord has truly been raised and appeared to Simon. Um, with this, that I just know that he rose for me because he loves me and he wanted to, you know, save me from my sins and wanted to, and he truly loves me. So, um, I actually had a different phrase stick out to me. It's, stay with us. And right now, since we're all kind of quarantined and stuff, um, it really sticks out because even if we're not able to be in mass um, with everyone, we always know that he's here in our hearts, and that's what really stuck out to me in this. Okay. Thank you. This is one of my favorite gospels, like Ray was talking about earlier. Uh, and every time I read it, and every time it comes up in the readings of the church, I just feel the Lord convicting my heart more and more to be a missionary disciple. And I think that this, this is what this gospel is all about. So Jesus um, meets his disciples on the road in, in verse 15. Jesus himself drew near and went with them. And he walked along and he met them where they were. And Jesus has done that so often in my life, and especially during this quarantine. Um, you know, when it's been a month without the Mass, but the Lord still comes to meet me in different ways. And like I feel like the Lord's getting creative with his ways of encounter in my life. And then in the end, the apostles were so filled with the Holy Spirit, with the joy of encountering Jesus, that they had to go. Even though it was nighttime and they were ready to go in for the night, they were so convicted about the truth of the resurrected Jesus, they had to run back to Jerusalem. And so um, this week, I'm going to be praying that the Lord convicts my heart and that he would show me how to do that, how to proclaim the good news in quarantine and social distance. <laughs> Very good. Thanks, Joe. Um, this is one of my favorite readings, and I can tell you, for me, having uh, really encountered the Eucharist as a, um, as a young person and just what it did for me, the last line um, in, this, in, this, uh, in this reading and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread, and how for me, when I encountered that in my own walk, how it changed everything for me. And as I go back and I read this, I just see my whole story kind of unfolding in a way that for so long I heard going to Catholic school, etc. You heard the message, you know, but it, it never resonated. It never made sense. And then when, when someone really challenged me, it really became that encounter moment where it, it, it became apparent and, and the Lord became really alive in my own walk and in my own life. And since then, as I looked at it, or as I, as I read this reading, and to read it sitting where we're at right now, quarantine, how different it actually reads, you know, because so much of it is really just like, like the Lord revealing himself completely and totally to us all the way through the Eucharist, right, which we can't partake in right now other than doing that spiritually. And so when I read that last line and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread, like he reveals the fullness of who he is to us in and through the sacramental life of the church. And I personally am so grateful that having that encounter that the church became such an important part of my life and in my walk and in my journey that each time that I read this reading, things just jump out to say like, I'm with you, I'm walking with you, I'm showing you, I'm telling you, follow me, be willing to surrender, be willing to be that missionary disciple, be willing to lay down your life, pick up your cross and follow after me. 
because these are the words of challenge that the Lord gives to me personally, and I hear all of that through this gospel, and what a gift it truly is to, to read it and to soak it in, because God's doing amazing things in our life. We just have to continue to keep our eyes fixed on Him. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Bishop Ben. As a group, uh, we'll uh, bring this particular Lexio of Divina to a close, uh, and uh, we'll do that in prayer together. So let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Okay. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.